This is the ES335 talking. I'm definitely the best. But this is the list, Paul, and I'm better than you. Hello and welcome to that puddle show, Dan here. Mick here. We might redub over some better playing for that, but anyway, um, for everyone who hasn't just turned off, Dan and I are walking out over the ice today, aren't we? We are. Um, because Les Paul or 335 mm -hmm. is an interesting question and we're doing it in the context of Dan and I normally Fender players. Yep. You know, home for Dan and me is uh, Strats and Tellies, mm -hmm. single coil pickups, and mm -hmm. that's everything we're used to. Yes. So really, this video is for anyone of that mind who doesn't necessarily have a great deal of experience mm -hmm. with two of Gibson's classic guitars. Indeed. And might be thinking about which way to go. Yeah. If you're after a humbucker guitar, they're generally, I would say... First port of call. Yeah. There's four or 335. Yeah, of They're course. The classics. We, we should add in the SG to that. We should add in all the other great dual humbucker guitars out there and even the triple humbucker guitars. So these are picked kind of at random. Interestingly, these two guitars that we'll start with, this is a reissue of a 1958 Gibson 335, which is the first year the 335 appeared. Is it really? Yeah. Wow, okay. And this is the 1958 reissue of Les Paul. Which was the first time the Les Paul went sunburst. So we're, oh, wow. we're, we're right back there. We're also going to get the gold top out in a bit. And, you know, it, let it be said that there are many, many, many different come in, many, 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 many. different kinds of Les Paul and 335 that exist out there. So this is really the guitars that Dan and I own and play. Yeah. But as we said, you know, it's really a second guitar choice for our second or third guitar choice. Mm. So if you are playing a different type of guitar and you're thinking about it, this might be interesting. If you have one of these, but not one of those, and I've always wondered, and if you have one of those, and you've always thought about one of these and have always wondered, it might be interesting. Indeed. Other than that, it might just be interesting. Or not. <laughs> right. Um, and, the, and actually, the reason we're doing these videos is today is the 4th of November? Yep. Yep, yeah, 4th of November. Uh, remember, remember? Yeah, US Election Day as well. And tomorrow, the uh, England goes into lockdown because of COVID-19. So Dan and I said, we better get some um, shows in the can because we won't be filming uh, probably for November and who knows, maybe December as well. So we thought we'd get some in. No Simon, no Fraser. Catherine is uh, womaning the cameras. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're sort of almost seat of the pants back to old school TPS, aren't we? Love it. Love it. <laughs> it's great. We just, this morning, we just did uh, Deluxe Reverb or Super Reverb, which is kind of interesting. That was amazing yeah. um amps today the deluxe reverb which we've kept and two rock classic reverb signature um just for a bit of fun so the amps are set relatively clean uh, and we've got a bunch of pedals what's the first question then dan okay i guess shall we have a quick look at clean tones yeah yeah and just so straight through so um i guess when i think of 335 i think of i guess cleaner yeah, tones as opposed to Les Paul, but I've managed to get some not, some decent cleans out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so for clean tones on your three through five, how are you setting that up? Um, I never really play spanky clean, um, but anyway, we've got the amps set up with a little bit of headroom in them, and uh, I will start on the neck pickup. How about that? Okay, you should be on. <laughs> So 
So it's it's thick and throaty, but there's still, I don't know, it sounds, because it's sort of semi-hollow, it sounds stupid to say it sounds airy, but there is a bit of air to the note. Well, what I think happens is, and the reason I played that, you know, I can't play jazz to save my life, but chromatic mm -hmm. thing in that sort of style is that's where I get led with this guitar. Okay. There's something in the initial attack of the note that is almost... I wouldn't. I don't want to use the word compressed, but, but that's it's kind of how it is. Yeah. It's kind of got. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't have an immediate attacking mid range like a solid body electric guitar has. So if we can just demonstrate them, go go onto your neck pickup a sec, Dan. Yep. And um, just play uh, this note and this note. And there's this, this, it's really interesting. Softer, quackier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, clearly choice of pickups makes a huge difference and all of that. But I think the, the very nature of the physical construction of the thing uh, has a sound. All right, middle position then, just for, for a clean sound. So all up? Yeah, all up. Let's do all up to begin with. Okay. Um, let's play, I don't know. Seems to me, you know, both guitars have vintage style pickups, so mm -hmm. I don't think we're a million miles away from there. The, the the solid body guitar definitely has more attack. Yeah, sounds like to my ears, it's got more extended high frequency range. Mm. Um, just for these two particular I, guitars, I, I think. Yeah, and I, that comes through in the attack. Yeah, those those because the transients are very different. Completely different. Yeah. Um, what's the body made of? Um, um, it's. A maple poplar laminate. So it's three okay. pieces of, they, they interestingly enough, um, I think Gibson still make their own laminates. Three pieces of maple poplar and laminate, uh, maple poplar and maple stuck together. Pressed in a machine. Pressed in a machine. Right. And through the middle is a maple center block. It's okay. And that's changed over the years as to what that um, material might be. So you're talking essentially about a maple laminate body guitar with a center solid center section that goes all the way through there. Right, okay. And a mahogany neck, so the necks are the same. So the necks are the same. Yeah. Um, so they could have what, literally taken the neck from and stuck on that and just put yeah whatever on the headstock. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a maple top. On a mahogany a, on body. On a mahogany body, okay, yep. all right. S solid body, and that's not weight relieved or anything, that guitar. Mm. All right, a um, little bit more on clean sounds. Bridge pickup then. Um, you choose something to play, Daniel. Okay. So that is brighter in the on the bridge pickup than this is. More mid range, I would more say. More mid range, but there's more top end in the bridge pickup. That one, that's S fascinating. Seems to be, um, yeah. Uh, the other thing we're sort of st stumbling into here is vagaries of tuning. I think that having played Fender style guitars predominantly all our lives, mm. the hands know how to intonate Fender guitars. Isn't that interesting? Because I'm really struggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. And and less good on on Gibson style guitars. And also, you know, twenty four and three quarter scale length, which is shorter than a Fender back bend over the nut. All the rest of the things about the Gibson construction mm. 
they are harder to keep in tune and intonate. And anyone who's ever owned a Les Paul will know that. Right. And I think people that have moaned greatly about Les Paul tuning down the years know this. They are absolutely, it's totally possible to set them up really nicely. Mm. So they work great for you and countless 335 and Les Paul players down the years are pay testament to that. But if you come from classic Fender background, can be hard work. I was watching Tom Bukovac as I do the other day. <laughs> And Wish I could honk Tom Bukovac. Yeah, we will soon. We will soon. Yeah. Uh, um, I've made a special Tom Bukovac, Tom Bukovac t-shirts. <laughs> he was out of stock. I wanted to order some t-shirts. He was out of stock, so I made some Tom Bukovac t-shirts for us to wear when we go and see him. Anyway, oh, nice. um, and he was saying something about that they got the the fret positions wrong um, on sort of classic Gibsons. And there's the oh, what's the uh, the Fibonacci sequence. Oh, I see. And there's something about that this, that makes it harder to intonate. Tom would know. Yeah, it's um, really, really interesting. I, I was talking to Bill Collings once. <laughs> May he rest in peace. And I said, why can't why can't you get a Les Paul in tune? Why is it? Why sometimes when you try to set the intonation, uh, the saddle won't go back far enough, even yeah. if you turn it around and put it all the way back. And I just always assume that the frets are in the wrong place because modern Gibson necks get fretted before the guitar's made. Oh, so wow. the fingerboard is fretted before the guitar is made. Oh, wow. Okay. And he said to me, and I said, is the bridge in the wrong position? And he said to me, no, the bridge can't be in the wrong position because it's CNC'd. He okay. said, the difference is the neck joint. Because you might have a 16th or so of extra forward and back in the neck joint. And that could be enough. Wow. He reckons. Okay. Reckoned. Well, he Sorry. Would know. That was a massive tangent. But anyway, w whether you can or you can't intonate your... Gibson guitars uh, brilliantly. Dan and I struggle. <laughs> okay, let's. Um, I think we're both struggling a bit with trying to play each other's stuff. I'm just gonna. I want to turn up the reverb a minute. Okay. And show you, or at least give an indication of what it is I love about 335. Okay. So a little bit more reverb on the two rock. A little bit more reverb on the deluxe reverb. I might have a little bit of. Uh, light boost from the protein in a second turn that gain down Okay. Hardly BB, but it will always, the 335 will always say that to me. Mm. And that kind of, the, it, everything we spoke about, the um, the different kind of attack, and especially those mid positions where you roll the front pickup off a bit, it just, it is that sound when you right. roll, a, roll a bit of, um, when you roll a bit off. Okay. Now, if I was to use the same sound with this on the... You on the neck, yeah? Yeah, and then I went to the mid position and just rolled the neck back a bit. Okay. And I did go on the bridge pickup at the end, but. Okay. So it's a really cool sound. It's not that. It's 
different, isn't it? It's very different. Because of the attack. Let's keep, let's stay where we are. It's interesting that, you know, I mentioned BB very deliberately. Uh, uh, just, you know, for the record, I'm not saying that is a BB King sound. I'm saying it makes me think of him. Yeah. But so I if you think about who BB influenced big time, apart from everybody ever. Of course. Clapton was a huge disciple of BB's. Wow. In a big way. And Freddie King, of course, but also BB. And then, so if we if we roll forward a bit and roll some gain on. Yeah. And use those exact same sounds, mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. Let's see where we get to. Have a go on that. Okay. So I was on the neck pickup. Yep. Uh, I went to the mid again, rolled the um, thingy back a bit, and then turned all the tone off right at the end. Okay. On the neck pickup. On the neck pickup. Give okay. that a go. Can't help but make that face. Yeah, yeah, um, and certainly on a vintage type three thirty five or um, less Paul, or indeed an SG, which is we Dan and I for reasons, for well, just don't understand why we don't have an SG, so That's we weird. need to rectify that. But you do, you know, you step into that definitely Clapton woman tone yeah. arena. Yeah, but that. That are, they are very different, yeah. though. The, the attack on this um, is very rock. Yeah. You know, very front edge, very uh, sort of, you know, uh, what am I saying? Uh, those transients are fierce. Yeah. Whereas they're softer on that. Yeah. Um, but that thing seems to speak... I don't know. There's, there's, well, it, people often talk about semi hollows, particularly 335s, having a very uh, uh, vocal right. type uh, presentation. I mm. think something about a vintage style PAF, which 
probably is a bit mismatched in the coils anyway, which gives you a little bit of uh, hollowy phasiness. Mm. And then you add that to a hollowy, hollow, a little bit of hollow body, even though it's not that much. Yeah. And then you really start to, you do get that really vocal. And certainly the vintage ones I've played, the best of the vintage ones I've played, mm. have that in spades over this one. This one's sure. relatively dark and full sounding. Yeah. Let's keep going down that road. I'm going to add some gain and go okay. mid focused. Okay. Because one of the things, um, Lots of people just immediately assume with a semi-hollow guitar is that you can't use gain right. and volume because it will feed back. Sure. So just out of interest, that's what we were on at, at be before. I'm just going to turn the pedal back on again yep. and just see how much feedback we get. Okay. Yeah, man. What a great sound. Try your bridge picker. So it's that front end of the note. So that's where the aggression yeah. on that bridge pickup. I mean, this is a beautiful thing on the bridge pickup. It's so vocal and, and really lovely for rock. But if you want a punchy punch, if you're doing if you're doing riffage. Yeah. Because there's so much attack with yeah. this. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I mean, for me, it's so interesting because I am, I'm more, you know, studying jazz and everything now, and I hear that and I'm going, oh, it's so lovely. Um, but, but but when you play your telly, that attack and punch and like kind of smack in the face front of the note is right to the fore, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Almost like the the polar opposite of this. And I think that's why specifically I chose this guitar because it is quite bright. Mm. Um, it took, me, it took me a long time to find this. Um, however, I thought this was bright until I heard the gold top. Yeah, we'll get that out in a sec. Yeah, we'll yeah. Get that out in a yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I think um, I can see why for the rock thing, this is an absolute classic. Yeah. You know. Let's return to that in a minute. We're going to go medium gain in a minute and think about some classic rock. Let's just, I want to... Add on some very mid-focused gain here. Okay. And talk about one of the things that the 335 is really well known for, largely thanks to Larry Carlton, which is that move from blues into jazzy fusion style stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Neither me nor Dan can really play that stuff, but we'll have a go. So um, characterised largely by the, well, Mark 1 boogies, but also dumbbells, and mm. it's that m very mid-range focus. So we've got tube scream on the board. I think we could probably find some combination of the protein and the um, and the TS and the TS. We're going to turn the turn the turn the blue one off in some game. And just and just yeah, try the protein. It's, it's going to be one one of these combinations, but.
Try this side. Okay. in the bridge pickup right here <laughs> microphone and pickups Little bit of <laughs> delay at the end there. I was trying to get the repeats to 335 milliseconds. Okay. <laughs> so, what's really interesting for me is that sound, that really middly sound, I much prefer the sound of that guitar to this. Right. I think because those frequencies, I think, are already inherent in here. Yeah. So, when you dial in that mid range boosty thing with that guitar, it works brilliantly. With this, it's just too much. I found it really hard. Yeah, Dan's uh, pickups in that guitar seem to be slightly less potted than these ones. These one, ones aren't heavily potted, but they're even... These are, I don't think there's a potted at well, all. Well, very lightly potted, because yeah. then we were starting to get some microphonic feedback. So I just, you know, I, 
I wanted to do that because I think a lot of people look at the 335 and they think, ah, no, too much feedback, can't possibly use it. Right. The DB meter will tell the story about how loud we were and there was a lot of gain on there. Yeah. So really it's about, you know, using your volume control and physically being in the right place. If you're really, really loud, yes, the bass frequencies can just get way too much. Hear the air sort of yeah, cycling. And, there, and there's <laughs> nothing you can do about it awesome. if you're really loud. But there's, you know, not many people get to play that loud anymore. Mm. So... Um, okay. At the moment, I feel like doing the blues through the fusion thing, or the traditional blues through the fusion thing, has definitely been favouring the 335 a bit. Yeah. Let's take a step back to kind of mid-gained classic rock. Now, we really need a Marshall for this, but... We'll make do with the two. I think, I think we'll make do with these two amps. They're both sounding pretty nice. Um, we'll get some crunch going and uh, and see how we get on. Uh, cool. Right, Dan, um, what do we need for this then? We just need a really nice medium gain overdrive, don't we, to begin with, do we? Yeah. Try that? Yeah. Liking that, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, Enough. Lovely. Yeah, nice. Okay. The the proteins blue side is based on a Marshall blues breaker, not on a blues driver, like we said in the video before. There are reasons for that. Uh, anyway, it is based on a blues breaker, which of course is the sound of supposedly the sound of a crank Marshall in a pedal. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm hearing is like in your face. It's so in your face. Give us some more of that. It's so instant. So quick. I'm going to notch the gain up a hair. Yep. Uh, what I'd like you to do is just play that again, but um, I'll, I'll go first. Just edge the volume pop back a tiny, tiny touch. Okay. All right. That's fascinating. <laughs> Observations? Yeah, well, it just this just gives a bit more dynamic. Yeah, I. Th so again, being being predominantly Fender players, this is not true of everyone. It's definitely not true of every everyone, but it's true of a lot of people where you're kind of on ten most of the time. Yeah, where can you go from there? <laughs> yeah. Certainly, when playing leads and stuff, and then definitely knock it back for verses and things like that. Different sounds. Many of the Gibson players I love the most, mm. uh, traditional Les Paul and 335 players, aren't on 10 in their top moments. Bonamassa is a great example of that, <laughs> where he's rarely on 10. Right, okay. Yeah, and I just think, I think it brings it back a little bit of, especially if you've got a bit of a right hand like you have, mm. sometimes those top notes can get a bit hairy and a bit kind of messy. And I think just knocking that back a touch 
gives you this really nice thing. I'm going to step on and uh, give you a bit more gain. Yep. Try it with some leads. See okay. what you think. So start on 10? Yep. Okay. Wow. Observations? Well, I, yes, I've got a very heavy right hand, but it does give me some dynamic back. So I can dig in a bit more. It's got somewhere to go. Yeah. That's amazing. It's I, really funny. When we had um, uh, Simon Jarrett yeah. on the show, I remember the first time he came on the show back in the, back in the shed and he used this guitar mm. and he's got uh, most the, his – Right hand technique is unbelievable, but it's it's very. Uh, he's not a hitter. He's not a hitter. He's no. a very considered. Player. Very like considered. There's the word. This is Simon Jarrett from Kingsley Pedals, by the way. And he that got and Kingsley Amplifiers. He got so much tone extra. Yeah, yeah. It was unreal. See, I think I, one of the reasons I think that might be the case is if you are used to playing strats and tellies in the way that me and Dan are, you're used to hitting the thing to get everything you possibly can out of it. Because the, dyna the dynamic range of the single chords just keeps going and going and going. Think, yeah. Well, if I could just hit it a little bit harder. You yeah. Know, yeah. And I think a lot of telly and strat players down the years have been hitters uh, and it seems to reward the dynamic of the guitar. But if you do that on a Les Paul or a 335, yeah, I think that's you, you kind of hit the ceiling too quickly and all of that lovely stuff that exists underneath that is gone. If you play a Les Paul or a 335, you'll know this already, but... I, when I remember getting my first Les Paul when I was about, I don't know, 18 or something. And I tried to play it the same as my Strat and it was just like, nah, no yeah, way, mate. Right. I'm not having this. And I didn't, I didn't not until, until my 30s did I work that out. Wow. That you just can't play the damn thing the same. Okay. So anyway, I, for me, if I'm hitting the thing and nothing's happening and it's like, wow, this the guitar has gone away here. Back there a bit. It seems so, like, illogical to turn it down. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's amazing. Nice. Okay, well, I'll just do... Um, I want to have a look at the in-between that... The, not the woman tone, but the tone rolled off, but there's that in-between position where I think it's the bridge pick up this... Or the neck pick up this rolled back a hair. Uh, Clapton's, gonna... Clapton's uh, setting for some of the cream stuff, and whether it was uh, a 335 or an SG, or five, uh, I'm not sure about the fire, but, but certainly the SG or the 335 was uh, quite a lot of his leads, or some of his leads, crossroads. You'll hear a bit of it where he's in the middle position, mm -hmm. everything else up, neck volume down a bit. Oh, okay. So everything else is up, neck volume down. As far as I'm aware. But then okay. on top of that, of course, is the very famous woman tone, which is either neck pickup, tone all the way off, yep. or mid position, some combination of tones all the way up. Okay. He's in interviews saying both ways over, over the years. So right. maybe that would be something interesting to try. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's give that a go because that sounds pretty righteous. Right, so. I think it's enough gain, isn't it? Yeah, pr plenty. So this down.
That is fascinating. Uh, I'm not sure you were really noticing what was going on there, but um, what happened was you started on the, the mid yep. position with the tones up. With everything up. And we just turned the neck pickup down a bit. And, and all the you, mids went honk. Honk. Yep. Yeah, which is just a killer, killer dual pickup Gibson sound. Uh, I think what then happened is... And then I turned all the tone down here. All on the, the tones pick. off, yep. yeah. You were in the middle position to begin with. Yeah. So w one version of the woman tone is in the middle position with all the tones off. And the neck pickup was still down a bit. Mm. But the tones, both tones were down. The neck pickup was down a little bit. Bridge pickup, full up. Then um, I was messing around turning your tones up and down. Right. Which you partially noticed. Mm. Uh, and then you ended up going to... What's quite interesting was you can turn the neck pickup tone all the way up in that mid position with the bridge pickup tone all the way down. And with 50s wiring configuration, the sort of the, the bridge takes the takes the strain, as it were. Right. So you don't really notice so much the tone of the neck pickup. Going okay. Up. And then we went to the neck pickup and that was tone up and down uh, for that version of, of yeah. that woman tone. Yeah. It's so, I mean, again, if you are a Les Paul or a 335 player, you know all this already, but... Such a wide range of sounds in there. I'll just do all that on the here, so yeah, you please. can hear um, what what you were what you were hearing. So I'll start with everything full up. Mm -hmm. I will then turn the neck pickup down a bit in the middle position. Okay. Uh, I'll then do the woman tone thing in the middle position, and I'll do the woman tone thing on the lovely the neck position. Uh, with apologies for it being called woman tone. Um, I think it's because it's uh, I don't know why. Oops, wrong one. Yeah. Household pets have probably left the vicinity. I'm it's so such it, a different thing. It is, and what I'm hearing is what I had assumed to be fuzz on a lot of albums. That the tone all the way off. Yeah. And that oh, that's so saturated. It sounds like really saturated stuff. Yeah. But with that tone all the way off, may, it, 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 it may, feels it, a bit like fuzz. It may well be fuzz. Uh, I don't know if Eric had a fuzz face or not. One would assume he did, or Trouble mm, Boost. But I just meant like it, like on loads of yes. albums. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, so you, yes, exactly right. You think it's fuzz, but it's perfectly achievable with a lot of overdrive yeah. and rolling that tone back. That's just, amazing. Just doing these two things. Um, speaking of fuzz, then why don't we finish up there? Okay. And just uh, this is a the jam fuzz phrase. It's the custom shop edition, but it's pretty much the same as the standard one, albeit with a bit of a. Uh, naughty transistor in it and um, a purple velvet finish obviously <laughs> sorry by naughty I mean hard to find and super rare indeed germanium um, fuzz eye up then Dan Lord <laughs> fuzz eye up
hard work? Uh, it's yeah, but it sounds it's it's worth it. it. Sounds great. It sounds great. But when you're used to dealing with like fuzz with on single coils, yeah, it's a whole other thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, struggling. I think we're both struggling there. Yeah, it's... Because it's a completely different thing. Yeah. I... Bear in mind that's a fuzz face. If it would be, a, if it was a muff or a tone bender... Tone bender would be Tone different. bender that, that, that lops a lot of bottom end off, probably much better suited. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. We didn't even hear the uh, Harmonious Monk in this, Dan. No. It seems like a shame. It does. <laughs> it does indeed. Or any, uh, or any delay. Come on, break my heart then. I'll break something. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. That was nice. Thank you. 
Very, very nice. Nice. Harmony smoke sounding pretty good. It sure is. So what do you think then? Let us know. Monday, uh, we will endeavour to do a VCQ. Yeah. What, you know, if you're uh, a Les Paul player or a 55 player, what do you like about them? What do you struggle with them? Or a Strat player or a Tele player or any other kind of guitar player. Um, don't say, where's the SG? Because maybe that's for a different show. Yeah. Or where's the Junior? Or all the other millions of guitars we could have picked. What do you think? What did we miss? Mm. What can we learn? And uh, what was your favourite? Yeah, that was fascinating. What was your favourite? I... There are sounds in that that were immediately recognisable yeah. and that soft attack, and it's really beautiful. But there are some rock things with this guitar that are sort of close to my heart, mm -hmm. you know. And But I, one of the things that... that, that, that a volume down thing yeah, with yeah. the high gain thing just sort of blew my mind a little bit yeah if you can it, it's hard to remember because you're like you know if you're, oh, so you're if in the moment you're like Wah! yeah yeah it's, ah, the, hang on what i need what i need down. here is something Wah! extra what I know, I know i'll turn down a bit yeah there you go <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't immediately come to mind but it, i just yeah anyway fantastic brilliant yeah. there you go thank you so much for watching uh please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford, sorry, where I bought this guitar. Indeed. In 2017. Yeah, I remember. Yep. Um, and also our dear friends in Australia. Uh, would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland, where Dan did not buy that guitar. No, I didn't. I didn't. I think I did play a Les Paul in his shop though once. That nice. guitar's been on tour with the Black Crows, by the way. Indeed it has. <laughs> um, also, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you very much. Uh, and also a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed a t-shirt or pedals and strings and DNM beanies, drives, DNM and drives, drives and, all, that kind and of stuff. all the stuff. We've got so much stuff in the store. Please go there, buy stuff. It helps us fund this show. Indeed, indeed. So we will see you on Monday for VCQ where we'll talk guitars and stuff. We will. Uh, also, don't forget to click down the links in the description. And if you find links to certain products and you click on them and it takes you to Sweetwater in the US and you buy them, it helps me and Dan out. We get a kickback off that uh, to help us fund the show. So please do that. Indeed. Yeah. Have a fantastic week and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Do that from behind the guitar.